Yeah, so if you've ever been a part of my life before, how it usually works is uh, we go off for about <laughs> well, about an hour um, is what me and Rav usually did over at the when we were doing the brand mastery campaign, which is phenomenal. And all of those replays are available on my YouTube page. I'm um, working on a few different things right now to get my links and stuff organized and optimized. So uh, I'll let you guys have more information how you can find that information soon. Um, for now, you could just go into the link tree and it should say something about the brand master again. So I'm really excited about that. All right, Brand is here. Let's see if I can invite him to join. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great, bro. How you doing? I'm well, man. I'm at the. I'm actually at a studio session right now, but you know we had to make it happen. Nice, 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 man. You re are you recording or are you doing some art development? Uh, my session as well as a few of the artists on the team, um, working some of their tracks as well. So yeah, I got tracks right now. That's clean. Yeah. Yo, we should add a title to this too. I did. We got the top addressing the gaps in business ownership. Yes, 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 yes. So anybody that's here, I hope you are interested in uh, being uh, developing in whatever business ideas that you have. Um, any idea you have is a business. We do want that to be understood. First yeah. and foremost, uh, if you're good at anything, it is something that you can monetize and um, hopefully change your life with it as well. Right. So and I just want to put together our ideas and thoughts. Um, we've been taking some time to actually gauge what, issues businesses are dealing with um so many people started businesses over the last two years since um covid as well as people that have been doing it longer than that um right. the business game is updated just like the music game updates just like the entertainment industry updates all the time. <laughs> just want to make sure everybody's actually knowing uh how you can utilize your businesses and um how you can utilize your ideas actually yeah that's essential that's essential so it's already seven o'clock, so let's jump into it. So for the people on my side who may not know who you are, uh, you mind giving us a bit of an introduction? Yes, sir. All right, so my name is Kane. I am the leader of the We The Future movement. I'm an artist by trade, by lifestyle, um, but I also did the the other route that everyone says, you know, the college, the, the job. I did that. And I'm still here being an artist full time. Um, and throughout that, that journey, I learned how to monetize the, the crafts that I was learning, the, the things that I put my time into, I figured out ways to make money off of it um, so that I can actually build my life around the things that I like to do um, versus the other way around. So um, that's been my experience. I'm 30 now, uh, 31 now, actually. Uh, degree in event management, uh, mm -hmm. like Earlier, We The Future Movement is an event company. It's a networking company. Um, and I have several other plays like Turo, um, my photography Ooh. business. Wow, serial entrepreneur, man. <laughs> yeah. So I have it. Yeah, man. So, yeah, that's, that's, been, that's been my lifestyle. And, um, you know, it's not easy. I don't want anybody thinking it's just some easy thing. It's still something I'm even building and developing. We might jump into it all too, but... There's levels to entrepreneurship and people sometimes, oftentimes get stuck in the the um, the, the full-time entrepreneur lifestyle where it's like you're still mm -hmm. your energy to make this thing work. Right. My, build businesses that can run themselves. So, you know, I'm starting up different ideas to kind of see where I can um, benefit in using that type of uh, thought process behind the business. Man, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. But well, we're looking forward to more of your ideas and learning more about how we can all get involved and, and just, you know, tap into you. It sounds like you're the plug for a lot of different ways to go about learning and capitalizing on our skills. That's amazing, especially on our passion. So that's awesome. 
Uh, so for your audience that may not know who I am, my name's Corey. Um, I, I used to run a, a managed uh, artist development slash resource company called Selfless Music Group. That's kind of where you and I met when I was selfless. <laughs> selfless in the city. Selfless. <laughs> So I've done a handful of things from events to um, consulting and just a lot of different stuff. Um, and I have a big passion for helping others. And then COVID, and when COVID came, I wanted to close in that business and started what I'm truly, what seemed to be more of my, along with my element, which is about personal development and entrepreneurial development. Uh, so I'm currently doing stuff like coaching and public speaking. I'm speaking out of school on Thursday, matter of fact. And it's just mm -hmm. things starting to make a lot. A lot of things are starting to happen, you know, when you when you start to align, you, you know, within your purpose and your element and you just kind of go with those. So that's that's been a really fun journey. Um, I'm just very grateful as well for you trusting me to hop on this live and have this conversation with you. Um, and I'm sure we're going to elevate a lot of folks tonight. Over, hopefully we're going to elevate a lot of folks. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So tonight we a uh, real quick, everybody. Um, if you have questions as we flow through the information, please put them in the comment section. We're going to do our absolute best to address a few of them. Um, and whatever we don't, we will create a resource uh, to try to make sure you have that information in your hands. OK, so as we flow through the content, please, please, please put your questions in the comment. This is a live Q&A on business. So we'll start with the first topic. So you said something interesting earlier about people um, in entrepreneurship kind of getting stuck in that full-time, uh, almost like nine-to-five lifestyle when managing their company. So can you talk a little bit more about that? What do you think the difference is that people are getting caught up on between, like, management and ownership of business? Um, it's the sort of the biggest – I'll say the biggest difference is your use of energy. Um, mm. So, you know, you can – you can work for some you can work for a company and manage mm -hmm. for a company but you don't have the stress of the highest tier of what that business has to deal with on the back end you're not actually having to deal with the end of the year uh financials right. you're just something that someone is telling you to manage and using your skills to bring to that business to help that owner make more money mm -hmm. okay. um, of your own entrepreneurship you are all of those pieces. Facts. <laughs> yeah. Every one of those pieces. So what, and, and I don't want to say caught up in it because there's some businesses that make sense. Like if you're a person that, that makes flowers, if you're a photographer, um, right. you might have to be the person doing it. Right. Uh, but the, the level up or the way that you can start to separate yourself while still being an entrepreneur, but really just raising your level as an entrepreneur is teaching. That's mm. the you can, you can train other people, like even as a photographer, I can't give someone my eye, but right. I can about people that have a good eye. I can show them the different things that I do. I can show them how I manage the business behind the scenes, what, what mm -hmm. I send, what templates I use for things. And that means they can now take that shoot when I don't want to take that shoot or when I have another business to go run or when I have another. Mm -hmm. So the idea of, allowing the space for your company to expand because it's not just you you still as one person only have 24 hours in your day mm. you, you can't burn out trying to satisfy everybody else that's actually like the opposite of what you chose to be an entrepreneur for right <laughs> <laughs> that the, uh, yeah the goal is to make it make sense um and and give you your time i always I always use the thought of like i i quit my job to buy time mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm buy my time back and as long as the things that I love to do can beget income, I can actually do that. And it might not be billions of dollars off rip, but at least I can do my life. You know what I mean? And let it get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's awesome. I mean, I definitely agree with you. Um, so um, and my uh, my my thoughts on it is um, I think for entrepreneurship, there's there's a separation, almost like you were saying, between owning the business and being like the overseer, the delegator, the leader versus managing the day to day operations. That's when you're actually in the field. And like you said before, um, you might be sending those invoices. You might be responding to those emails, those administrative tasks, you know, for your operations, your sales pipelines and all those things um, is more on like the management managerial side. 
Um, I absolutely think that is essential, though, uh, for entrepreneurs to try to find in some way their flow on how to navigate both of those spaces, um, especially on the solo level, because um, if you are servicing clients and you're a photographer, like you said, and you're wanting to take professional photos and you have great quality um, that you bring to the table, but no one, but, and you ask for the money, but have no way for people to pay you, then how are you going to, you know, how are you going to get paid? Like literally. Um, and then, you know, from there, what's your process? You know, how are you going to stay in touch with them? How are you going to deliver those items? So that's more like on the management side. Um, as well as the leadership where you're like, okay, I need to find other clients like this, understanding those modalities, those char those character and personas on how you can get to the bag the soonest in the seamless way possible. So I have to agree with you in that as well, my good man. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, that's good. All right. So the the next question we have, so again, it's it's, it's super important. No one no one can build Rome wasn't built in the day and certainly not by one individual. <laughs> No matter what the history books try to tell you. Exactly, right? <laughs> Fact. Even in America, man, they, they it's not a one-man show, no one-person show at all at any point. Um, but that brings us to the importance of community. And you are the guy when it comes to it. I mean, you have your own movement, man. That's amazing. So tell us a little bit about the importance of community and how to possibly create one as an entrepreneur. Uh, so importance of a community um i'll say the importance of it in my life um graduating high school knowing i wanted to do music had already been doing it for a few years recording and things like that um not having a community of people that understood the lane that i was diving into mm. was uh, a limitation shout out to uh, divergent university uh that's one of the limitations that we face not having the right community around us that one, understand what we're doing, and two, can support it. Um, if people don't understand it, it's hard to support it. Um, so that ultimately is the reason why I went into college, and that's a totally different community. Um, so the importance of community is having the pieces around that you are not, um, and being able to actually gain that. Like, what, what you have, I don't have to be that, because if you're the best person that can sell fish and, and catch fish, I can go learn another skill and now we can do that together. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I, having the, having avatars of all the different qualities, not only give you a, um, a point of view to pick mm -hmm. up, but it also allows you to fully hone in on what you bring to the table because these mm -hmm. people. Um, so I think community is just really good. It's good for like that sharpening of who a person actually is. Um, and then what was the second part? It was, it was oh, uh, like how to potentially create one. Oh, how to create one. Yeah, um, or like how to get involved or find like your tribe and stuff like that, you know? Interests and values. It always starts with like you. Like I'll say this you are your first community. Um, mm -hmm. if everybody's into your signs and things like that. You know, you got three like main signs, which are three different things that can tell you a lot about who you are. Uh, so you already are a bunch of different you. So first finding community in self um, and then allowing what you find out about yourself to govern the surroundings that you put yourself in, whether it be physical mm -hmm. people. Um, you want things that resonate around you. You want things that are going to drive you towards where you want to go. So you kind of have to figure out what your values and your principles and those things are internally are before you could even surround yourself with the right community. Um, so, yeah, I think building it starts with building you mm. um, and maybe in building you, you join communities to to see how you are, to to have that gauge of, of who you are and where you fit. Um, but throughout that, you're still just learning who you are so that then you can create the community around you, which that can be your family. You know, that could be you starting a family that could be um, you creating a business and that that becomes your company culture essentially mm. so community is just it's your influence it's how you're influenced and it's how you can influence others um and it's really about what your core principles are that's what will determine what the uh community actually becomes that's powerful that's powerful that's powerful you know it's interesting that you say that it's a it's a almost like a um how you say it, like a like a balance or or like a mirror you know 
in terms of your internal values, your internal interests, how you develop yourself and become more aware and conscious of your abilities um, to create and influence the outside world. You know, those those two things and how they work together um, is, 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 is really important because of the law of attraction as well. You know, the type of people that you attract, how you manage those relationships, you know, all of those in what is it in and what is it um intangible um weapons or resources that we have in our arsenal to kind of help us build relationships with others uh for the benefit of not only ourselves but them as well um i i mean i agree with that that is essential i was talking to a gentleman the other day we had an extraordinary conversation and we were talking about just that how your external um realm is a direct reflection of your internal beliefs you know, so the whole, like, you are what you attract and everything. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add that I it's essential for people to get around things that are that are driving them forward. You know, like you were saying, a network or an association, opportunities, challenges of sorts. Um, so that way they could continue in that journey without having the disdain or uh, negative experience or thoughts for those individuals who don't necessarily know how to support them you know even in the self-reflection one can identify the non-aggressive ways that they can become um, supported through the means of others Um, I use this example all the time like my wife she didn't fully understand the world of entrepreneurship and when I'd ask for her support she'd look at me like I don't know what you mean but because I'm aware that she loves to read I started out by just having her read my emails and that fed me and got me closer. But we were able to build this support system around the things that she likes and that's not super demanding for her. So being able to do that as well and finding ways to connect and, you know, with resources within your community, whether that is your family, like you said, um, I think you're totally spot on with that. You're spot on with that, for sure. Okay. And I got a question for everybody that's watching. If you want to leave an answer, like what what's a core a top core value. If you want to leave a top two, that's cool. But like, what's something that you stand by? Um, yeah. That is the driving force of purpose of the things mm-hmm. that you attracted to what things you should um, stay away from like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there was another point that came up when you were talking to like the idea that um, like, there's already so many outside factors that can limit what you're doing. You can't yeah. be like one of them. So that's why all those internal doubts and all that stuff is like, nah, like the faster you can get past that and also having the support of people around you. If you don't know how to support yourself that way yet, be around people that are going to cheer you on no matter what, because that's going to be valuable to you, um, to who you become. Big Drew hit it on the head. Community drives them. Uh, faith mm-hmm. is another one that we're seeing now. Yeah. yeah. Like that's Yeah. Community is huge, man. And there's plenty of communities there. You can have a community for anything. Um for uh, shoe salesmen, <laughs> you got you know, saying there's communities for all of this type of stuff. So, um, just finding where you fit in and what things align with your values. Yeah, I think that's definitely a great first step forward. And then continuing that alignment is going to lead you further along in your path to whatever it is that you desire um, in life and business, you know, because those things are synonymous at times. Uh, yeah, and I absolutely agree with you all in the comments for sure. Purpose and authenticity are key. Dakar, you're right about that. Uh, Kiara right there on faith. I'm totally 100% on faith. I got a whole, like, this whole big thing on faith. You know, faith is everything. Um, the belief in the intangible and then the action to create certainty, like that relationship is clutch. Um, so let's continue moving forward. Uh, so, we talked about community and why it's important. We talked about the difference between business ownership and business management. So let's talk about, you know, let's get to the bottom line. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we have to be able to support our lifestyle and sustain our well-being as well. Um, as someone who I think was able to accomplish that on some front, uh, you are you, Mr. Payne. Um, I would love for you to give us some insight on what what that looks like. You know, how how important is it to have like a, objectives or strategy around uh, a, attaining capital or revenue or income? Or whatever? 
Um, I know something that hit me years into already starting a business, and it was funny when someone actually uh, made the point to me, but a business isn't a business unless it's making money. Mm. Start a business to make money. Um, and I know <laughs> from the artist's mindset, the creative mindset, the nurturer mindset, the community mindset, we're oftentimes against making money. Um, I, mm. I so um felt like it was wrong it's like no if i got a god-given talent and i can do it for someone why not um but that's just not the world we live in we actually live in a in a society that uses capital um and i don't believe capitalism is a bad thing or a good thing it's mm -hmm. not a society that we live in you have to exchange money for goods you can't live where you're living without spending money um so you don't want to be um on your last trying to do for everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. Other thing that we kind of get twisted as entrepreneurs and as creative people. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's probably, it's number one, it's the prime thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you as the person come with the purpose and the passion and the, and the, the helping. The business itself, the physical entity of a business is, is a, it's the conveyor belt for, for you manifest. <laughs> That. Okay. I feel that and even you know against what people believe even a non-profit makes money a non-profit has to bring in income in order to do things for other people so just consider the idea that nothing in this world really runs without uh money being behind it uh so yeah capital is very important and um just be mindful of your internal reflection of what money does mm. that's that's usually what the worry and it comes in. That's usually where the detachment to money comes from, from people mm -hmm. like, but it's not, it's the money isn't evil. It's, it's you. <laughs> if, if you use money evil in an evil way, you're evil. The money isn't. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, just the idea of it. Yeah. It be, and be, and, and stand tall in that. You know what I'm saying? Stand tall in no. the fact that you is valuable. Like that's the other part. Like when it was a barter system, when it was trade, it was like the values is it's, already there it's an intangible value because we're already exchanging but the idea of you're coming to me for something and and you have something i would need as well there's no way we can't exchange money now the same way we would have bartered before you see what i'm saying why mm -hmm. can't we all update we don't have to be separate we can all let's show each other how to get some money so that when we come to each other for services there's actually a, a financial exchange too because that is how the world works Mm. Yeah. So all things we use our tools it's the relationship or whatever it is that can be toxic i mean right. I, I i agree with that in some extent so i'm going to go ahead and say that i think that that the idea or the complex around earning money right because we got to go in business for a profit but then the barrier is like that perspective of asking for something in exchange for um, and that be an exchange of value. So I know for me, at, at least, uh, when it came to, you know, offering services and perspective, I'm like, man, I can do this for free all day. Um, but if people are getting paid to do it, then why not me too? It doesn't mean that I love what I do any less because I'm making money from it. You know, it's that separation that you said, the perspective on what you're using the money for and what are you allowing it to do for you? Um, you know, like you're going back to that internal beliefs, like you said before, um, is what's going to shape the relationship around capital. Um, so when it comes to entrepreneurship, especially, I think that having a goal, um, kind of like saying like you're putting it in the world, you're manifesting it, you know, um, affirming that you're going to have X amount of dollars you know, work in reverse order and make sure you take actions to make to to measure up to that expectation that you're setting for yourselves. Um, I know that in business, um, again, for myself included, it was a big challenge trying to figure out price to value. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, hey, I do this thing and it's important. I see other people getting paid this much for it. So I would think based on just my ability to do the things, I should be charged X amount of dollars for it you know, which is kind of a double-edged sword. So I would say starting out when it comes to building a sales strategy is to focus on what you can attain 
and let them and let the market determine everything else from there. So a lot of people get caught up in the high dollar mark um, because they see the value, but they lack the experience, the social experience, the credibility to to speak to that price point. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, have you ever seen that in the in the marketplace yep. or for entrepreneurs? Old brain blast of stuff like that's so okay. So so if we talk about those steps of entrepreneurship, you got like the idea person at the beginning, right? Yeah. The idea person is the person that might have skills, right? But the key part of what you're saying, and I'm even realizing this is the issue with schools, it's skills, but application of the skill is what gets you paid. Having yeah. skills not important to anybody because anyone can learn a skill now. You mm -hmm. know, years ago when not everybody had recording equipment, I could go around and say, yo, I'm a rapper and not many people rap. And that's like something I do. I do that. But not more people rap. You have to have more than the skill of rapping. You have to have the application of what other things you have to do, those systems that you talked about earlier. Yeah. How flow? If people want to pay you, do they have a way that they can pay you? Do you have a bank account? Do you have an entity started? Like It's all those other things that people aren't really being taught, but the application is, is literally what raises your value. If you yeah. do the thing and, and people feel more uh, comfortable going to you and your reviews are great, and you ease people's stress, and then they tell more people, your value can keep going up. Um, and I think oftentimes with us, we we start low because we know that the immediate people that we want to help don't have. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we still have to think Robin Hood. Mm. Then we still have to go get from who has to do for the ones right around us. We like That's the role that we have to play if we're taking that route uh yeah. but yeah man like yeah 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 just whole brain <laughs> whole brain blast yeah i mean I'm, I'm with you man i'm like like information without application is just it, you know it's not knowledge it's just information you know very similar with with skill set you know skills without experience has no value you know because you have to become the more proficient you become and the more impact you're able to create while becoming proficient, then the greater credibility that you gain. And with credibility comes influence, and then influence comes affiliates, and then relationships, and then your brand, and then you scale. We can go all day. You know, we, you and I, man, we can go all day. <laughs> we can go all day. So, um, but we are on the same page about that for sure. All right, cool. So, real quick, we want to go ahead and encourage you guys one more time. Go ahead and post some questions in the comments down below so we can go ahead and continue with these answers. Again, we already love the activity that you're giving us. We admire the participation um, and we're looking forward to keeping this going. Um, so man, another, so what's, what's something that, uh, another thing that people may not consider, but is really important for business development, entrepreneurship, life. What's a nugget that you think is people not, not really aware of or maybe overlooked? Time management. Mm. yeah like the the beauty of a job because i ain't i'm not gonna i'm i'm out of the phase of of shitting on anybody that has a job i was that way when i first quit mine but that that's a route for those that need to be managed mm -hmm. not and that's not a that's not a bad thing right go to a job and you know exactly what time you got to be there, what time you got to leave, and you don't have to necessarily take it home with you at the end of it, that's um, your time is being managed that way. As an entrepreneur, it's you can wake up with that same grogginess that you feel before you go to your job, but now it's really on you to decide, am I going to get up and do something still? Because when they're managing your time, you're going to get there and clock in by 9 o'clock. You see what I'm saying? Because if you don't, you're going to lose that. Having that decision be something you have to make on your own every day. And am I going to go to sleep or am I going to get this next thing done? Or can I, can I afford that? Can I, all these different things that the time is, time is money, as they say. <laughs> so your time into it, is it making you money? If you don't think you, what you're going to put your time into outside of a job, is going to make you money, you might need to keep that job. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Um, so yeah, I think the use of time management is probably the biggest thing. Really, self management overall. If you can't manage yourself, you're not gonna be able to manage a business. Somebody's gonna have to manage you in the business in order for it to be successful. If you can't do it yourself, so I think just the 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 amount of you that has to change in order for your business to be successful. Like people think it's just I can start a business. Nah, it's like you are that. Like man, a lot of times when you start your business, it's attached to your social security. So any, or not your social security, your uh yeah your social security attached to your own uh your your own personal credit. So the idea that like who you are and how you treat yourself and your responsibilities and money reflects into your business no matter what. So it's like you have to be able to manage yourself, and that's. It's a it's a big growing up task, but you have many routes that you can choose to do so. You can go to college to be growing up. You can stay at home to be growing up. Business is the route that I feel like has been the one that you learn the most about yourself. Um, because it's all about you. It's all about what you want to bring to the world and how can you make it work? And am I going to actually get up and do it every day? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, hey, that's, that's it, man. I, I... The, the the candor, it brought two things to mind, really, for me. So for people who need structure or routine, definitely, a hey, nine to five, that thing. You feel me? Like, do that. Leverage that as an opportunity. Keep in mind this perspective. You know, if you're doing the nine to five thing, that's not going to be enough in most cases to fill you up, to fill you all the way up in terms of fulfillment you want to leverage your job, your nine to five, as a conduit or um, resource to fuel your aspirations, whether that's starting a business, maybe that's going on a trip every six months, maybe that's spending time with family, whatever these goals you have in mind, if your primary desire is for structure and routine and you're doing a nine to five thing, just leverage it properly, you know what I mean, so that way you don't compromise your lifestyle. The other thing that it brought to mind is um, when you were talking about self-management, which is, man, it's, that's huge, is, is the, the importance of personal development. You know, it's, it's a daily discipline, a daily practice of, hey, I'm going to X. You know, it's on me. I have to be accountable. I have to uphold my responsibilities. I need to make this, take decisive action to reach my goals. You know, the, the idea you know, of freedom is closely attached to business and entrepreneurship. But the same point that you made, a lot of people underestimate the lifestyle of owning or managing a company. It ain't free. <laughs> it ain't free because not everything you have depends on it. If you don't, yeah. that day you don't get no money. You see what I'm saying? Like that's, it, it's, it's not, yo, when we, I think it was me and you talking a couple of weeks ago, like when we made the realization that like, you can still be an employee to your own business if you yeah. ain't right. So that thing that you left your job for is like you're just doing it to yourself. And now you, your boss, that hurts more than somebody else doing it to you. You're the reason why you're not happy. You know what I'm mm. saying? A personal level. Don't forget this business is still part of your personal. The personal development is equally as important as the professional when it comes to starting your own business. And that's the that's why I think it's a huge key in in growth over lifetime. Like mm -hmm. if you can start your own business and build something that is helpful to people and it and it carries your your and it helps you adjust. Dang, do I actually need a mansion? Cause I like doing this thing and it makes me this much money and I can I, I like this. I don't necessarily it tell it treat it, if your values and principles are there, you'll start making adjustments based on that. You know what I mean? You don't need to be a billionaire to to live happy you know what i'm saying mm. so yeah yeah that's fact man and just like um i might be i hope i'm saying this name malil oh that's, uh, that's real yeah okay sorry about that but aligning your habits at the end of the day you're absolutely right we're all three of us and i'm sure everyone watching this live and then whoever's going to review in the replay we can all agree that at the end of the day lifestyle is all about discipline and habits, man. Your ability to create the thing you want is contingent on how committed you are to sustaining that thing it, once it's created, growing it or shrinking it. However, it all comes down to action. 
um, in both planes here in earth and then even in heaven, you know, the thing that is essential is action. Faith without works is dead. Action without commitment is bullshit. You know, excuse, excuse my language, you know, but I mean, that's what it is at the end of the day. Um, and there's so much more that we can discuss. Um, so before we, before we cut off, um, any, any other thoughts that you have? Um, anyone that is interested in pursuing anything, if you have a talent that you like, if there's something that you just really crafty and you do on the side, um, I challenge you to figure out or to find someone that's doing that as a business, just so you have an example. Um, Cause it's possible. <laughs> Everything is possible. Um, yeah. That's my, that's my biggest thought, man. I'm, I'm currently like in the studio session hearing the music being mixed. Yeah, that's probably calling you. <laughs> not, not, and, and it's that, but it's like, I'm, I'm appreciating the fact that like, I've aligned myself so that things can be getting done while I'm handling my business. Mm. That is the goal. Like I shouldn't have to pick between should I be doing my music or should I be doing this? It's like, no, it's my music is my business. I pay for the studio time and I got to make sure the music makes me some money on the other side of it. That's a business. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just like a, a moment of clarity that I just had. Right? That's amazing. So I mean, my closing remark is just a reminder, got everyone. Money comes second to your passion, values, and drive to achieve the quality of life that you want. Money is a tool, it is a resource, it is external, it is beyond you. But if used properly in the methods to acquire it, manage it, and then um, increase it, then you are on a quick route to live in a life that you can, that you imagine is possible, actually creating that. Um, and if you want more resources, you know what I mean, more information, um, again, there's a lot more that we could have covered tonight. Um, but if you want more in general, find a place to get plugged into. Um, me and Payne, we are putting some things together, you know, so there will be some more information coming on that extremely soon. And um, we'll create a document of what we discussed, a recap, um, to have that resource available for you as well um, in due time. All right, everybody. Um, it has been a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Payne. Um, I'm looking forward to getting more involved with We The Future um, here with Champion Circle, see how this collaboration jumps off. Um, and for everyone viewing now and later, I bid you adieu. Have a wonderful night. Stay motivated, stay encouraged. And remember, actions, okay, are essential. Money is secondary to your values. And Payne, what's your closing thought for you? Drop your email if you want the notes. And that's, uh, watch this later as well as people that have been on here because we I'm real big on follow-up. We talk about action. It can't just be some notes. We always want to leave you guys with something that you can follow up on us on as well. Um, so, yeah, like leave your emails in our DMs or something if you, um, mm -hmm. if you, if you want to follow up on the things that we discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. Here's a quick, here, we'll, we'll go ahead and put it like this. If you want more information, type Q and A, DM that to us, and we'll give you, we'll get you what you need. DM Q and A plus your email, and we'll get you tapped in. All right. Yeah. Um, everybody, be great. Be blessed. Peace out. All right, y'all.